Hey, what's up, VC? It's uh, Steve, Harmless Rebel, and it's time for another hard rock and heavy metal update. Um, so let's just kind of jump in. This is stuff that I've bought over the last few months. Uh, some, uh, a few of them came from oldies.com. Uh, a few are, are albums that I bought from members of the VC. A couple are um, albums that I bought as discounts. I, you know, on Record Store Day, a bunch of stores were having discounts. I picked up a couple things there, too. Um, so we'll start with that. Uh, the first thing I picked up, um, this is one that uh, I've owned this on cassette. I've owned this on CD. I've, I've owned it on vinyl once upon a time. Um, I've wanted to find an original copy for quite a while, but every time I do, they're trash. So I finally bought the repress. But this is... Uh, Back in Black from ACDC. And then staying on the ACDC front, uh, a member of the of the uh, VC was selling a copy, um, the, the Facebook VC, of uh, 74 Jailbreak. That's one I was missing. This is an original U.S. pressing. It's a uh, gold stamp promo. I've always loved this album. Um... Uh, all five songs on here, I just, I really dig. And I, I didn't know it was a Gold Sam promo when I bought it. It was just one of those things that came in. And, and uh, along with that 74 jailbreak, I also bought uh, Speak of the Devil uh, from Ozzy, which uh, I've always liked this. This is from 82. Uh, and this is him basically playing all the different songs from uh, uh, Black Sabbath. And this actually, even though I do like this album, this is my favorite, or my least favorite of the Aussie lineup. This was with uh, Brad Gillis on guitar, uh, Rudy Sarzo on bass, which I like Rudy Sarzo, I just wasn't a fan of this lineup. And then uh, Tommy Aldridge on drums. And then we go from that to Blizzard of Oz, again, an original pressing. Um, I found this at uh, just one of the local stores for, for relatively cheap. Um, the, the sleeve has a little damage at the top here. It, it doesn't wear through, uh, but the vinyl itself is in uh, near mint condition, so I, I couldn't pass that one. I think I paid like 10 or 12 bucks for it, you know, so pretty good deal. In that same shop, I also bought uh, another copy of Mob Rules. Um, this one is uh, just as clean as the last copy. Uh, if you watched a few months ago, I, I did a huge trade with uh, Captain S or SMF Captain Howdy. And I actually traded my copy of Mob Rules, so I needed to pick up another copy. And that was for the the uh, Kiss Originals 2, which was a Japan-only set. Um, we'll save that one for a little bit later. I also picked up, I don't remember where I picked this up, I think I only paid like two or three bucks for it, though. But I found a really clean copy of Greatest Kids from Aerosmith. Um, of course, I have this on CD and cassette. I needed a copy on uh, vinyl. So these two kind of go together, uh, but uh, the first one is uh, the second album from Montrose, and I believe it was also the last album with uh, Sammy Hagar uh, with Montrose. I'm not a real big fan of any of the Montrose albums that came out after this one. The first one's the best. This one's uh, right up there, but uh, it was nice to find a copy, and I found it for really cheap. It was 2 or $3, so... And then speaking of Ronnie Montrose, I also picked up Gamma One. Um, Gamma was a band he did in the early 80s. It was uh, or late 70s, early 80s. Um, it was kind of a blend of hard rock and AOR. Um, there are some good songs on here. Uh, some frog elements as well. Uh, I think Gamma Two was the best one. Gamma Two was more of straight up hard rock, less AOR. And then Gamma Three was just uh, a straight up AOR from what I remember. So... Uh, another one that I picked up, um, I don't remember where I picked this up, but this is another cheap one. Um, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, Fire of Unknown Origin. It's just a killer, killer uh, Blue Oyster Cult album. And this has some of my favorite uh, Blue Oyster Cult artwork as well. So this is a band that members of the VC have gotten me into. I, I've known about this band, uh, mainly because of Metallica. Uh, but I had never really sought out any of their stuff uh, until I started seeing uh, or hearing different or talking to different members of the VC about it. And uh, 
this was one it's funny I was talking about this band with uh, Scott Waters literally the day before I found this and I was mentioning that I've never seen one of their albums in a while and then I go to a antique mall and I find Bandolier from Budgie and it's a white label promo yeah, pretty much in mint condition yeah. uh, the only thing that hurts the value or hurts to that is the, the little uh, hole punch there but uh, killer killer album I, I love this album um, I've got two of their albums now on vinyl, and I've heard three or four, um, and, uh, this is right up there with the top of them that I've heard. It's a really, really good album. Next, uh, this one was a dollar bin score. Um, I basically bought it for the front and back cover. And it ended up being pretty decent, uh, worth checking out. This was actually never released uh, in any other format from what I saw. But this is a Hey World from Roadmaster. Um, I don't think what year this was. That doesn't even say. But it's just... Uh, just some good hard rock definitely worth uh, paying a couple bucks for if you see it. You know, I wouldn't mind running across, obviously, a better sleeve. The vinyl was, the only reason I bought it is because the vinyl was really clean. But, uh, like I said, it ended up being decent. If you run across it for under three bucks or, you know, pick it up. Uh, uh, working on my ever-expanding April wine collection, I ran across Harder and Faster, which is their 1979 that hard rock album also picked up Winger 2 uh, I don't like Winger 2 as much as I liked the first Winger um, it, it's funny the first Winger is actually the um, <laughs> it's actually the soundtrack of me running away uh, what, uh, a friend of mine and I in uh, 89 decided it would be cool to run away we had no real complaints you, you know I mean, we were from poor families, but we weren't like mistreated. We just thought it would be cool to run away. Um, so we stole a bunch of change from our parents. Uh, and when I say I cut a bunch of change, it was like 300 bucks worth of change. Both of our parents had these big change things. And I just decided to run away with that money. And uh, we ran away from Phoenix to Casa Grande, which is uh, about, about an hour, hour and a half outside or away from where we lived in Phoenix. Uh, we took a Greyhound bus, and, and you're talking sixth graders, you know. Bought the tickets ourselves, hopped on the bus ourselves, nobody said anything, uh, you know. Um, he knew some people in Casa Grants. So we stayed at a friend's house who was like a, a sophomore or a junior in high school. And, and we were basically hanging out with uh, uh, other pot, or I'm sorry, not, uh, other metal heads in, in Casa Grande for like three or four days before some cop finally stopped us and questioned us and asked us what we were doing out at like 10 o'clock at night, you know. But uh, we had two cassette tapes with us, between us. He had brought Winger, the first Winger album, and I had bought um, um, Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, that's the one with Killer of Giants on it. Ultimate Sin. Uh, I had brought Ultimate Sin, and we just went back and forth listening to those two songs. So um, it's just every time I hear Winger, I think of that. But uh, Winger 2, it just reminded me of it. Next up is the not-so-black metal um, uh, Death Heaven. Uh, this is their first full-length album. Uh, I talked about Death Heaven uh, one or two videos, maybe two or three videos ago. Um, they're generally categorized as black metal. However, they're not. It's more like a uh, uh, post-rock with uh, may maybe even post-metal um, with uh, black metal vocals. And, and it's not satanic, you know, so... Uh, I I don't even think that it's really black metal in any way, but uh, and this is uh, Rose to Judah, and it's on uh, clear vinyl. Really good album, definitely worth checking out. If you're into uh, post metal or post rock, you'll definitely dig that album. Uh, and then uh, adding another one to my Saxon collection, uh, probably my favorite Saxon album. Uh, Den in the Leather. I finally uh, ran across a copy. I, uh, this was from a member of uh, the Facebook VC was selling this for a good price, so I snatched it up. The uh, 
This is one of the only early 80s sacks. Is that was this 80 or I believe it was 80. This is one of the only early 80s uh, saxes that, that I've never owned on vinyl, so I'm, I'm glad to finally have this. I've had it on cassette for years. I've still got my original cassette that I've had since probably the late 80s, early 90s. No, it had to be early 90s. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with them until then. Finally picked this up. This is actually a favorite of mine, this band. Um, I don't know why I kind of dragged my feet on picking it up. I had already heard it. Um, I loved the album. I, I had it on, on CD already. Um, and, and finally, I just grabbed it. It's uh, Catacombs of the Black Vatican uh, from Black Label Society. Uh, I didn't know that it was on this weird, it's like beige, pink and green vinyl. But uh, as with all the Black Label Society albums, it's just a, a killer, killer uh, album. That's a uh, gatefold. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but that's from the, the catacombs in Paris, I'm pretty sure. It's got all the skulls and stuff. Uh, and then the, the, the lyrics in the middle there. But just another uh, killer album from Black Label Society. That's one band that, uh, you know, I think they put out, what, seven albums, eight albums now. I love everyone. Actually, it's probably more than that if I look it up. <laughs> now we're getting to some of the stuff that I picked up from uh, Oldies. This isn't all of it. This is actually um, the last video that I showed from Oldies.com. A lot of this stuff is from that that last order. I have it in an Oldies.com order in about a month and a half, so this is stuff that's just been sitting around that I finally got around to listening to. Um, first up was Tyrant, uh, Too Late to Pray on uh, Metal Blade from 87. Picked up Victory. And a couple people have shown this one. So I won't go into this one too much. The second album from uh, New Wave of British Heavy Metal uh, um, just badass is uh, Demon. And this one is a uh, I believe it's a French copy. Yeah, made in France. And that was just a box set release. I wish I would have known that before I bought this. Um, for relatively cheap of the, the, I believe it's the first four uh, Demon albums from the early 80s. Now, I want to say it's under, it's under 40 bucks for those, or for that box set. Um, then these next two are just both ass-kicking albums. Uh, the first one was Hollow Z. I've actually ordered this from from uh, Oldies three different times, and for uh, for some reason, every time I, I'm assuming that uh, when I ordered it, it was in stock, and by the time they processed it, it was out of stock. But uh, the first two times, my order or that portion of my order was canceled, so I'm glad to finally get this in the collection because I love this album. And then. Uh, the last one from that is uh, Heretic, Breaking Point. Just another killer, killer album. Uh, and then this uh, last one, I should have saved this till the next video, but uh, uh, I won't. I'll go ahead and show it now. It's uh, Mama's Boys. I believe it's their self-titled. Um, there was a different cover when this was released. I, I want to say they're from Ireland. I'm pretty sure they're an Irish band. Um, and they, they, the original cover, I think, was a little bit cooler than this was. But when they released it in uh, the UK and the US, for some reason, they uh, changed the cover. I'm not sure why. It's a great metal album. I, I really dig this. I just ran across a uh, promo copy, too. Uh, of one of the songs from here, and I'll show that in another video. But it's really cool the paperwork that it comes with. <coughs> uh, and then uh, uh, a couple more. Or this last one I, I got about, uh, I don't know, a month and a half ago. Uh, this is uh, 
Genghis Khan killers from uh, Tokyo Blade. <coughs> what this is, is uh, prior to being called Tokyo Blade, they were called Killers and then Genghis Khan. Or Genghis Khan, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and this is basically the all the material that they recorded under those two names before they became Tokyo Blade. Now, I haven't really been a huge Tokyo Blade fan. <coughs> I remember hearing some stuff from them I didn't like years ago. But I tell you what, these two, this double album kicks ass, so this makes me want to go back and uh, take a look at them again. It's got this really cool uh, OB on it. Uh, you can tell it's a High Rollers uh, press. A nice live shot of the band. And then this one comes with, uh, as with all High Roller, the packaging is just amazing. Uh, it comes with your little, your typical High Roller and the list of all their albums. <coughs> it comes with this really cool Genghis Khan Killers poster. And then I didn't know this at the time. I, I thought I was this was on black vinyl, but it's not. It ended up being on this. Uh, like I don't know how well that's coming in, but it's an olive green vinyl. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, oh, actually, before I forget, what we're listening to in the background is uh, Desolation Angels. Um, Desolation Angels is, is another one of those uh, little known new wave of British heavy metal bands that just never got big. <coughs> um, this album is just kick-ass. Um, Valhalla is probably the biggest hit off of here, uh, which is what we're actually listening to right now. Uh, this one was uh, put out by Buried by Time and Dust, I think two years ago. Um, I've really been digging this for a while, though. Um, so, shortly after Buried by Time and Dust put this out, High Roller got all the rest of the material that wasn't released as part of this, all their different EPs, all the other stuff that they released, and uh, put it together in a, a four or five disc uh, LP, or four or five LP box set. Uh, and that's available too for like 65 bucks, uh, which uh, for what you're getting is a really good deal. And uh, based on the popularity of this album and that box set, uh, the band decided to get back together after God knows how many years. Uh, and they're recording again. They've put out two demos already on CD, which uh, uh, I haven't done yet, but I'm going to go ahead and order them from Europe. <coughs> they're only like five or six bucks a piece. But I'm curious to, to listen to what they're playing, if they're sticking with the new wave of British heavy metal sound or if they're going another route. But, man, um, this one, did, even this is the repress. The originals are near impossible to find. They were private press. Um... But even these buried by time and dust represses are getting hard to find. Um, so if you run across this or this sounds good to you, look for it now while you still can. But uh, that's the front and the back cover. This also comes with a really cool tour poster. Live from England. Supporting Bad Lizard, Heavy Metal Thunder. Killer, killer poster though. And then here is the uh, little insert it comes with with the shots of the band. And then of course the Desolation Angels logo. And like I said, it's just uh, a really killer. Oh, and then also this particular one also came with a 7 inch of uh, Valhalla and Bodicia. And that was one, uh, that one took me a while to get. Um, I saw it for sale uh, probably about a year and a half ago. And uh, I didn't realize that they only had one left. Uh, this was through uh, Rockadrome. And so I literally left the website, went to YouTube to check it out, and really dug it. And went back to the website like a couple hours later, 
uh, after listening to it, doing some other stuff, and it, they had sold the last one. And I've been waiting a long time for that to pop back up, and uh, it finally did. They got one copy to come in, um, and I grabbed it as soon as I, I got the email alert, and there you have it, you know. Killer album, killer, killer album. Uh, that's it, VC. Um, I just finished up with all the stuff for the uh, part two of the Judas Priest uh, uh, of my Judas Priest collection, which will cover all the albums from the 80s. Um, so that'll like to be my next video. I'm going to record that on Saturday, I think. Uh, and then uh, I haven't done a, a, a country music update at all this year. Um, and I've got a little section of my shelf over there with just some country music stuff I bought in the last year that I've never shown, so uh, I'll do a, a, an update on that in the next uh, probably four or five days as well. Um, that's pretty much it though, VC. Uh, let's see, today is the 23rd, so we still have a few weeks until my contest is over, uh, so if you haven't done your responses yet, make sure you do that. I think I've had uh, 10 or 11 people so far do their responses, um, uh, and I'll be doing a video to remind people of that in about a week or so. so. Take care, VC. Uh, have a good weekend.